Good uh, afternoon, everybody. My name is Marcela Černochová. I am the managing director of the British Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I'm really delighted that uh, I can welcome you on the panel uh, Race to Zero and uh, Green Energy on behalf of the Chamber. Uh, now, uh, let me introduce the moderator and uh, expert guarantor of, uh, of the panel, uh, Jan Fousek. Uh, Jan is uh, chairman of the supervisory board of the Czech Solar Association, CEO of the Association for Energy Storage, and uh, a member of the board of the Modern Energy Union. Uh, he has been uh, active on energy markets since uh, 2007, uh, in past, he also uh, helped to develop uh, the Chinese emission trading market. So basically, he has uh, lots of uh, experience uh, in the field of, uh, of energy and green energy. And therefore, I think uh, the panelists and uh, you as participants uh, will be in the, in the right uh, hands. So uh, Jan, many thanks for taking part in this panel and uh, the floor, or better to say, uh, the screen is yours. So, please. That was nicely said, Marcella. Thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction and for giving me the floor and the chance to moderate this uh, today's panel. And good afternoon to everyone, to our panelists and to our listeners. Let me warmly welcome you all in this discussion panel, which is called Race to Zero Emissions and Green Energy. The panel takes place during very turbulent times, not only because of COVID-19 crisis, but uh, mainly because of the EU and has uh, also its member states, including Czech Republic, face one of the most important and positive, uh, not, uh, not negative, positive challenges within, uh, I would say, last few decades. Uh, chance to decarbonize its energy system, industry, transportation, telecommunications, IT, and generally to digitize all aspects of our life. There are an amazing opportunities coming from Brussels. There will be hundreds of billions uh, euro ready just to be invested into this huge energy and digital revolution. Green Deal, Clean Energy Package, Just Transition Fund, uh, Recovery Plans, they are only a few, but the very uh, important ones, uh, the funds, they will uh, provide the opportunity to do so, to ignite the light of change, start the real revolution, and that's what uh, today's uh, blog will be about. Our government is rather not too progressive in many aspects, especially not in energy and environmental issues. Um, uh, I've heard that we've been witnesses today of uh, the lack of participation of a representative of uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade, and I would say it's just uh, proof of uh, the general approach the uh, of the government towards uh, this very important uh, and one of the presentations of today's panel will show it one of the important very important i would say most important aspects of our life to uh, to live in a cleaner and more efficient and sustainable uh, world but we are lucky uh, if if the state doesn't guarantee it uh, business does and as for as uh, for most of the time before well ahead the legislation is the business and it fills my heart with optimism and today uh this block which i have the honor to moderate uh, you will see the evidence of that that the industry and the companies and the corporate business is uh, well ahead of that uh, so um, that was uh, a welcome work from my side. Now it's time to uh, to introduce our today's uh, not only speakers, but I would say top level speakers and debaters from uh, three super well esteemed global companies, uh, all active in Czech Republic and all three of them will have uh, very interesting presentations because I had a chance, of course, to uh, uh, go through them. We agreed with the organizers that I will first introduce all three panelists and debaters, and then I will uh, give them the floor for their, uh, um, you know, initiative uh, presentation, and then uh, the discussion will uh, follow. Our first speaker will be Mr. Michal Foritek. Uh, he is a managing associate in the Prague office of law firm Kinstellar. He has a strong focus on energy competition, public procurement law has a substantial experience in energy industry related transactions, renewable energy projects and uh, energy trading uh, matters, as well as advising on national and European energy regulatory issues. Uh, by the way, he's uh, also one of the, one of the 
co-authors of uh, the commentary to the Czech Energy Act issued uh, by the publisher CH Back. And by the way, uh, I had a, a chance to be a part of the preparation committee of uh, the Czech New Energy Act. So um, uh, it's good to uh, it's good to have uh, Michal Foritek on board. Um, Michal will speak about European Green Deal and generally the plans of, uh, of the EU in decarbonization uh, and uh, the green energy efforts. Uh, so uh, he will be a first speaker. Our second speaker uh, is a managing director of EON since 2017. His name is uh, Tomáš Bilohoubek. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad to have him on board. Um, uh, Tomáš itself is and himself is responsible for IT, digitization and customer care. Before joining Eon, he worked in uh, business development uh, on the Czech branch of T-Systems, subsidiary of Deutsche Telekom. Then he worked uh, almost for 10 years at the consulting firm uh, Detecon International. And then he dealt with uh, project focus on strategy and, and uh, corporate finance, ICT, telecommunication uh, sectors, and not only in Germany, but also in, in Europe, Middle East, Asia, and, and Africa, so uh, all around the world. Um, so uh, Tomáš will uh, uh, let us know, uh, will tell us more about uh, how E.ON contributes uh, to the general sustainable, uh, uh, greener, uh, and uh, more effective uh, digital world. It will be the second presentation. Uh, and our last presenter, last but definitely and not least, will be uh, Mr. Richard Stonavsky, Director of Regulatory and External Affairs at Vodafone. Uh, Richard has been responsible for Vodafone's external relations regulatory strategy uh, since 2011. In this role, he represents the company's interest in dealing with Czech and EU regulatory authorities and public institutions. God bless you for that. <laughs> he also represents uh, Vodafone in the professional and industry associations and supports various innovative uh, corporate projects. That's what we have definitely in common. Uh, and I would like to uh, add also that before joining Vodafone, Richard uh, was responsible for regulatory matters at T-Mobile and Aliatel and also worked as an assistant to the Senate of uh, the Czech Republic. He graduated at the Prague School of Economics at Sheffield Hallam University and uh, he recharges his batteries uh, by traveling and spending time in the mountains. That's what we have uh, in common as well. So, uh, gentlemen, I think uh, it's a time to uh, give you the floor. Uh, I hope I said everything. Just one last reminder that all the listeners uh, should send their questions through uh, MIA application. I think you received the instructions. Um, uh, I, I have some questions. Probably the organizers just wait there head so it's good um, yeah so you receive probably all the informations uh, I will in the meantime read it uh, read your questions uh, so do not hesitate to to send it to all our speakers and now I would like to give the floor to our first speaker to Michal Foritek and he will tell us something more about uh, the plans of the of the EU in in, in the Green Deal and, and other stuff uh, thank you very much, uh, Jan. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank you, uh, the BCC, uh, for the uh, opportunity to speak uh, at this conference. Uh, I'm very glad that I may support the initiative of the British Chamber of Commerce aiming to make our businesses uh, more green. And now let me proceed uh, with my topic that I prepared for you, which uh, concerns, as was uh, indicated, very important European Union initiative that is called Green Deal. So what is the Green Deal about? Uh, it was just uh, a few days uh, after Ursula von der Leyen took her office as the president of the European Commission in December 2019, uh, when she presented the Green Deal, a fundamental strategic program of the EU designed to govern the policy in the Europe for decades. It was really important moment. She described this uh, moment as a situation that this is Europe's man on the moon moment. Despite the fact that uh, it was uh, introduced already in 2019, it is still very valid 
and very important set of documents as it provides framework and support for the initiatives of the EU towards a climate neutral Europe. So what it is and what is in. The Green Deal is a comprehensive plan consisting of the policies which will be introduced in the EU over the next few decades. I must say, first of all, that it's a very ambitious plan. At its very core, the initiative targets to net zero emissions by 2050 in the whole EU. In this regard, the Europe decided that it wants to be a front runner in climate friendly industries and Europe wants to become the first climate neutral continent by 2050. It also aims to reduce its carbon emissions with 55 percent by 2030. I must say that uh, it's a document which is very wide in scope. Uh, new policies uh, will be developed to fully decarbonize the energy system. They will also strengthen the circle economy. They will improve resource efficiency and promote sustainable land use and food systems. These policies will cover all sectors of the economy from transport to energy and from agriculture to construction. The Green Deal will push all sectors towards the more sustainable business models. As I said, the plan is obviously very ambitious, but the communication sent by the European Commission uh, was that it wants to leave no stone unturned and it plans to review every EU law and regulation in order to align them with the new climate goals. This will start with the Renewable Energy Directive and the Energy Efficiency Directive. The European Commission will also focus on the Emission Trading Directive, which governs the regime for uh, emission allowances. And uh, it will also focus on uh, the direct EU directive dealing with the land use change. So what is the aim of the European Green Deal specifically? Let's have a look on the most important plans and policies that will help you prepare for this new future. As I said, the most important topic is climate neutral Europe. Uh, it is an outcome of the studies that more than 75% of greenhouse gas emissions are related to the production and use of energy within the EU. As I said, the climate neutral Europe is therefore the overreaching ob object of the European Green Deal. EU will aim to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by uh, 2050. Sorry. And key principles will include the prioritization of the energy efficiency. Uh, it will focus on developing of a power sector which is based largely on renewable energy sources. It will try to secure an affordable EU energy supply and to have fully integrated, interconnected, digitalized EU energy market. So how you should prepare uh, your company for this? I believe that uh, in order to understand the real impact of the Green Deal carbon reduction ambitions on your business, you should ideally start to quantify the carbon emission in your business supply chain this will help to focus on key focus areas for carbon reduction. I also think that uh, you might want to undertake a risk assessment to understand the implication of tarbo tax for these key focus areas. And also you should evaluate which 
climate reduction measures can help you to anticipate these risks and to reduce your operational cost. Uh, I think that uh, you should see the green transformation as a key business opportunity. You should try to evaluate uh, how your business could step into this green market through new business solutions, sector engagements and partnerships. The another area to be covered by the Green Deal is circle economy. It's another key pillar of the EU Green Deal as it will account for half of the emission reduction goal for 2050. The action plan which will be introduced uh, within this area will analyze the life cycle of products and materials to ensure a sustainable use of resources. And also uh, the plan will tackle resource intensive sectors such as textile, construction, electronics, food and plastic. Uh, so what you should do to prepare for this change? Uh, I think uh, it would be really important within your company to assess the dependency of your company on key resources, to understand what the risks are, what the risks related to the disrupted supply and increasing inputs cost might be. You should also be thinking about switching to alternative solutions such as renewable energy, or you might search for innovative materials with a small environmental footprint. You should be also thinking about uh, integrating circle economic principles in your design guidelines and procurement policy. You should try to think about reducing material and packaging use, also prolonging the life of your products, how to turn products into service, and also how to maximize the use of recycled materials and designed products so they can be reused, repaired or remanufactured. The other areas to be covered are sustainable industry, building and renovation. Uh, the Green Deal will also focus on eliminating pollution and uh, agriculture and also the sustainable mobility will be covered. Uh, within the time provided, I won't go into much details with respect to these. I think uh, it's only important to again mention the sustainable mobility, uh, Green Deal uh, and also uh, European Commission, uh, of course, will again focus on the transportation because uh, outcome of the studies is that at least 25% of greenhouse gas emission result from transportation methods. So again, there will be a focus on CO2 emissions from cars. Again, uh, there will be initiative which will support uh, electric vehicles. And there is an uh, objective saying that uh, at least 1 million public charging points needs to be installed across Europe by 2025. In this connection, the European Commission communicated that every family in Europe needs to be able to drive the electric car without having to worry about the next charging station. There is also other area to be covered um, within the Green Deal, which is biodiversity. Uh, this is because the, uh, the population of wild species has declined by over 50% over an average in the last two uh, generations. Within the last slide, uh, I would like to talk uh, about uh, the European climate law uh, that was uh, just recently introduced by the uh, European uh, Commission. Uh, specifically on the uh, 4th of March, the European Commission published uh, the founding legislative proposal of the EU Green Deal, which is the EU climate law. The proposed regulation is very important uh, document, 
because it sets a legally binding EU-wide common target of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 and also of course establishes a legislative framework for achieving that uh, objective. Net zero means that greenhouse gas emissions must not exceed removals of these emissions. Uh, the proposed regulation uh, would require EU institution as well as uh, EU member states to take uh, necessary measures to achieve the climate neutrality objectives. The proposed law also aims uh, to raise the ambition relating to the existing emission reduction targets. Currently, the EU has the target of reducing greenhouse gas emission by 20% by 2020 compared with 1990 levels and by 40% by 2030. The Commission amended this uh, original proposal and now it uh, targets to uh, reduce the emission by at least 55 persons by 2030. The law also addresses the necessary steps to get to the 2050 target. For instance, the Commission will be empowered to issue recommendations to member states whose actions are inconsistent with the climate neutrality objective and member states will be obliged to take due account of these recommendations or to explain the reasoning if they'll fail to do so. The proposed EU climate law require the commission to, to propose revisions of key climate and uh, energy legislation in line with the revised 2030 target by June uh, 2021. And this includes, for example, as I said, European Emission Trading System Directive or the regulation uh, concerning uh, the uh, use of renewable uh, energy. Um, that is uh, all uh, from uh, my side, which I wanted to address uh, within uh, my presentation. I would be very happy uh, to uh, answer any questions uh, you, you might have. So uh, please, please ask this. Thank you. Michal, thank you also very much for your interesting presentation, showing the vast opportunities the, the EU legislation gives to member states, companies in, and investors. Uh, I'm sure we will have a, a, a really fruitful discussion afterwards. So uh, please stay with us. Thank you uh, for your contribution. Um, you, you mentioned all aspects of, um, of the Green Deal and uh, EU uh, emissions and energy law. And you mentioned that we have to change also the transport, not only the energy system, but also the transportation, how the corporations will behave, uh, etc. And that's why we have uh, two, uh, two other, uh, let's say, uh, company or corporate speakers. So uh, now let me please uh, give the floor to Tomáš Bilohubek, the Managing Director of uh, E.ON Czech Republic, and he will show us uh, what E.ON does, uh, which efforts uh, E.ON uh, does uh, in these matters, please. Tomáš, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jan. Uh, thank you very much for introduction and thank you very much to the British Chamber of Commerce for having me here. I assume that you can hear me and see, see my screen. Uh, so, um, and I will try to run quickly um, through my presentation and I appreciate that previous, Michal had an excellent presentation. I will try to be, be uh, equally uh, good in quality and time. Um, you may know E.ON as a brand, just for a reminder, it's important for the context, E.ON on the Czech market is a full-fledged energy company, not having only sales part, but also having the distribution part. Uh, which is somehow uh, complement, complementing the networks of chess in the southern Bohemia and, and Moravia. So this is just for the context of our company. And obviously being the recently one of the largest, if not the largest energy company in, in a European market, we indeed are fully in line with the, with the targets being set by regulation and society expectations. So E.ON commits fully to, to the targets. Uh, however, um, I will try to show you that the targets, particularly for, particularly for energy, is, is really uh, relatively big. When we were discussing with colleagues how to approach the, the environmental sustainability issue in Czech Republic, we have been always notified and warned by 
by some some sometimes burned bridges on a, on a solar boom some 10 12 years ago etc so as you see on the eve of covid outbreak we were kind of testing the market and sentiments of of the society and we were quite encouraged and surprised that at that time as we may still remember uh, the env environmental issue was one of the most burning burning issues resonating uh, in the society and i do sincerely hope that this will be back soon with us uh, that uh, the other COVID uh, will be soon over and and i really cross fingers for this this one so we can tackle the uh, the the other other burning thing so you see that the sentiment of, of czech society and i know that we are mostly czechs here has been always hesitant but it was really uh, really surprised for us that people are resonating much better and was a good start for for tackling it more openly and uh, and hoping that we will not be always associated with some wrong regulations and incentives uh, being given in the past um coming back to the to the to the challenge we have been facing uh, this slide is not nice but i still plugged it in on a short notice um, usually what you do and you should do you should measure your carbon footprint that's the only proxy we are all having it makes us comparable it makes us somehow tangible etc and all the targets are anyway translated in a carbon neutrality by 2030 or 2050. Um, is this might be important for you that uh, eon only on the czech republic counted together distribution and we are distributing not only electricity but also gas and the sales parts and selling the, our goods to our clients we are accounting roughly for 8 million um, uh, tons of the CO2 per year. And it, uh, if you look at the comparable bank with a similar number of employees and probably similar number of clients, uh, bank has a 10 to 12,000 tons. So um, let's say two management sitting, um, uh, let's say on, on, a, on a completely different challenge. So this is just maybe for you to take it with you that uh, bringing energy sector to carbon neutrality is a super tough call. And uh, I would just park it here because I actually none, no one in the world could then answer you how to make energy sector sustainable in that volume and expected growing demand for the electricity as a key energy source uh, in the future. But uh, this is a challenge we are facing. Uh, we are indeed happy that there is a basically not only only demand uh, and striving from from society our customers for something new and sustainable uh, we are very happy for the new regulations which uh, which Michal was talking about this is all, all clicking in in the right time so we do appreciate and we see the growing demand for the green energy and uh, and the solutions which make uh, let's say our lives more efficient but sustainable what is also important to say that Actually, these solutions are not anymore, let's say, um, red, red business cases. They are turning into positive cases. And this should be also appreciated in a context that, yeah, the companies can jump on it. It is, but we must also realize that this is supported by, by basically, it's, it's anyway sort of subsidized and for the very good reason, but shouldn't be spoiled. That's why I'm also saying that to be authentic in this change, and I'm representing here the industry which have been benefiting heavily on a CO2 heavy means of, of gen generating resources in the past and making not only society rich, but also our shareholders rich in the past. So we are absolutely entitled as, as a key imperative to change the, 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 the DNA of the corporations. I think this is hand in hand. Customers will trust that they may pay certain premiums, they may wait for our solutions for the green energy, etc but they must believe and trust that companies have turned from, from, let's say, inside out as well. And this is what I would like to talk maybe at the beginning about very shortly. So Aeon has launched um, uh, beginning of last year, really massive, uh, massive internal sustainable campaign. Uh, it's been really called a green wave. And we really wanted to say, because we are launching some green, green products, we are launching some, some, some opportunity to the people that we are lowering the barrier to play the sustainable game with us, but we want to be kind of a fair, fair player in it that we are also sustainable ourselves. So this was a big, big change. Of course, this thought is slightly by, by COVID, but uh, on the other side, COVID was one of the largest sort of uh, sustainability factors because we saved a lot of <laughs> CO2 emissions even by our own operations. Um, so we are looking heavily on, on savings everywhere. Uh, we are really pushing our operations to the very uncomfortable zone. Um, and uh, 
all, all stripped to the measures because as has as been said eon is definitely not standing out of the commitment to be carbon neutral by 2050 um, of course we will always have to probably compensate uh, some of the footprint by by compensatory programs but uh, large, a large part from it we must bring by our own kind of uh, optimization um, we are focusing very much on our buildings. This is what we can control. So we switched all the buildings in Iona and we have more than 200 locations in Czech Republic. All, all of them are being sourced by the green energy, either by direct purchase of Ion or the landlords being friendly forced to, to, to do it for us. So we are checking their, their kind of a purchase mix, whether we can claim that, that our portion is green. Um, so it's sort of having some externality to other markets that we are pushing markets to behave. And I think it's one of the roles of the key, key corporations on the Czech market as well. Um, digitization, um, obviously COVID is definitely a tragedy, nothing, nothing else, but uh, uh, it pushed us heavily and even our customers pushed to do, do it more like self-care, digitization push, etc. We are really like counting the numbers uh, of, of, of online interactions with us on the sales side. We, we are limiting paper, uh, paper printing, etc. These are small things, but they, they make you um, um, legitimate in this game. So we are pushing on it. And by the way, it's not a small money uh, for, sales, for sales part of the company. We, we are unbundled. We cannot benefit from the margins either on a distribution or on a sales side mutually. Mobility, e-mobility, that's one of the hot topics uh, all over. I must say e-mobility is not yet the, the, the clear case for everyone. And this is one of the large topics we may even discuss. State is so far badly failing and limping behind the demand and all trends. Um, we are automotive country spitting thousands of cars per day. Uh, but if you look at the density of charging station, it's, it's just horrible. Uh, so. Uh, um, but we are at least trying to be uh, e-mobile e e e and CNG mobile as much as we can. So you see that we are pushing even this one and we are one of the leaders on the Czech market in building up the charging stations. Uh, renewable energy sources, it's a big topic. Uh, we, we are hoping for the second uh, solar boom in, a, in the best possible intent even though uh, the new regulation doesn't suggest that it should be a sales company benefiting from us. It should be really like the benefit should be given to the customers, but we can always help them. Um, we are happy to be, to be the true leader in the green energy. Our, our purchase mix is, is the most green among others. So we are purchasing three terawatt hours from the renewable energy. So, um, and we believe that, uh, let's say, the philosophy of, of renewable energy where this energy, energetic sustainability of the Czech, Czech Republic is one of the topics which needs to be revisited or constantly look at because there is a plenty of opportunities to generate uh, clean energy, unfortunately, outside of the footprint of the Czech, Czech, uh, Czech borders. Uh, we, we are historically owing 11 hydroelectric stations, um, which is more like a side note. It's a result of the past rather than the, the recent strategy, but we are pondering on that one. Uh, for sure, and obviously we are proud owners of one of the largest rooftop uh, solar solar uh, solar um, uh, generation for our own purposes in our on our largest location in Brno. Um, smart grids, as you as I told you, we are also the not negligible um, distributor of the energy, uh, and we are planning to invest uh, out of the 31 billion Czech crowns in the next five years, more than more than 7.3 billions into smart technologies, really uh, focusing on, on energy efficiency, uh, reducing the energy losses, etc. And we are busy in on the group level working in innovation centers how to really crack some key questions on, on, a, on, a, on the grids. For example, with the cooling cooling uh, gases, which is the, one of the uh, the what the the, uh, the, the most uh, CO um, or environmental unfriendly gas in the world is SF6, you know, which is used in energy grids. Maybe not everyone knows that, but uh, it's it's thousand times more dangerous than CO2. Um, yeah, so that would be quick run through. It's rather in the highlights, uh, and uh, I am handing over to Jan uh, and happy to take on any questions later. Thank you. 
And we thank you, Tomáš. Uh, it was an amazing presentation. You know, I am from the sector and uh, we are uh, basically sharing the same field and uh, we share, I would say, 95% of our efforts. Uh, so fingers crossed to uh, um, all of us, uh, let's say, representing the modern energy uh, sector. Uh, let me also thank you for your amazing campaign uh, coming with the famous Czech actress Marta Isova. Uh, it, it brought, uh, I would say, um, uh, the focus of people, they even didn't care about the green energy. So it brought their focus uh, also to, um, uh, to the topic. So thank you for that. Uh, you do a great job. Uh, okay, so I will, I would like to comment everything, but uh, I will leave it for our final discussion. Thank you for now on for your presentation. Um, now I would like to uh, pass on my my um, my word to our final, uh, last but not least, uh, presenter uh, Richard Stunavsky from Vodafone. Um, and that's something I extremely looking forward to hear, uh, since uh, I'm not very in details familiar with uh with how uh, such an important uh, global uh telecommunication company react on all those challenges they are coming out from uh from brussels so uh, uh richard the floor is yours and looking forward to your presentation thank you, you very should... much uh, okay yeah confirm... okay yeah please. just confirm if you see the presentation please we do thank you thank you very much great all fine. Uh, thank you for this uh, introduction and thank you, uh, British Chamber, for having me here. Uh, Jan, the bar is really high by your introduction, so uh, I will try not to fail. Uh, Vodafone, uh, I hope I don't need to introduce, but just uh, for the start, we are a telecom operator, telecom provider, uh, active in uh, all continents. Uh, which, by the way, except of Antarctic, uh, which, uh, by the way, faces a huge challenge to sustainability and green topics. So I will I will speak also about the differences between Europe and uh, non-Europe, where the situation uh, might be different. Uh, active in eleven countries in in Europe, uh, and uh, probably serving uh, more than 4 million customers here in the Czech Republic. Uh, if I go to my first slide, I really have to start uh, by this message. Uh, people ask us, what's our sustainability strategy? What's our CSR, maybe the obsolete or the old word, CSR strategy? And we say, actually, we do not have a separate CSR strategy. We have something what we call purpose, uh, which is built in, in all business or employee activities all around uh, the group and also the Czech Republic. Uh, and the purpose consists of three pillars, digital society, inclusion for all and planet. I think it's obvious in the digital society, we want to introduce the best digital solution, the best networks, across our footprint in the Czech Republic. Uh, uh, we just have launched 5G, 25% of our population is already 5G, could be 5G connected, uh, one and a half million, one gigabit uh, per second to homes and, and offices. Inclusion of all, again, it's not only our foundation activity, uh, all probably and hopefully have Zakranka on your mobile, but also being inclusive uh, in, the, in the sense of providing the services and being able to provide the services to everyone, which mainly in the time of COVID is crucial. And last but not least, and this is what uh, we will be discussing uh, now, is the planet. We, uh, we, are, we, are, we are not a power plant, so we do not have the, the one chimney or one power plant which would be visible to everyone. But we have thousands and thousands of small sites and we have the cables and exchanges which consume energy. And uh, we, uh, we are aware and we, 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 we want to be focused on the fact that uh, we have a role in the society uh, of pushing uh, the topics of green 
uh, pushing the topics of being uh, uh, sustainable, and we are doing this. Uh, if I uh, go to the next slide, here actually this is our story. Uh, in the Czech Republic, since 2011, we have been using the green energy. Uh, we have been really proud about it. Uh, we, have, we have it printed on every invoice, also on the digital invoices. Uh, and uh, we want to keep this trend, even if we uh, uh, have acquired other companies and if, uh, even uh, uh, that we actually are growing. Uh, if I compare eight years ago and now, uh, the amount of data our network has delivered uh, is 30 times bigger. Uh, if I compare the amount of spectrum frequencies in our mobile network, we deploy twice as much spectrum in our networks now compared to eight years ago. However, uh, our uh, emission remains the same and our energy consumption increased roughly 30-35%. So we try to deploy the most efficient uh, uh, technologies and be very vocal about it. By the way, uh, next week, uh, end, of, uh, end of March this year, we will be switching off the 3G, the third generation of mobile networks and uh, deploy 5G on these frequencies. And the reason for this is that this new technology is, uh, is uh, more efficient and delivers more product, which is data for us. So we are trying to be leaders in this and we are the first operator to switch from 3G to 5G. Uh, and then there are further, uh, further, uh, uh, further uh, things ahead of us. Uh, by June uh, 2021, all our uh, European operations will be running on uh, renewable energy, so on green energy. Here I have to say uh, European, uh, because outside of Europe, we have to postpone this goal goal and this target to 2025. Uh, and again, uh, mentioned before, we unfortunately do, have, uh, do not have the ability to reach to all locations, to all offices or shops. Uh, but we understand uh, that we need to compensate this area. So the goal of 2021 is somehow achieved a combination by our, our own acquisition and our own and the compensations, unfortunately. But at the same time, we are we we want to be a role model and we want to spread this message around. So we are, we are not only looking how we behave and how we perform. Uh, we want to check with our vendors, with our, with our suppliers, how they are uh, performing. And therefore, uh, since the last year. 20% uh, of, the, of the evaluation of various uh, uh, requests for uh, RFPs, RFQs, are based on sustainability criteria, which is not only green, but also uh, diversity and inclusion. We look how the vendors care for their people, uh, care for their employees. And this all steps into our decisions from whom we will buy stuff. And also, uh, we try to be very active towards our customers. Uh, and I will speak uh, about this uh, a bit uh, uh, later. Uh, we provide solutions which help the customers to not only save money, but also to reduce their footprint. Uh, and if I look at our, uh, uh, our carbon uh, emission, carbon gas emission, in the last year, uh, we so it was roughly 15,000 tons of CO2, uh, whereas with our services, and it's mainly IOT, IoT, we helped our customers to, 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 to save and reduce by 14,000 tons. So we think we are roughly there to be neutral uh, with counting in the impact of our services. And also we will be speaking about e-waste uh, everyone at home 
uh, probably uh, uh, has a, a old mobile phone. And this is something which is a very, uh, very good source of, uh, re of further resources for recycling. We are pushing our customers and, and asking them to bring their, uh, their mobile phones back because we can reuse and recycle them. And by the way, uh, we, uh, for every phone, for every, uh, every gadget, uh, the customer brings to our, our store, uh, Vodafone company gives money to the Vodafone foundation. So there is, there is a, there is a win-win situation of financing the, uh, other activities of Vodafone foundation. Uh, coming back to this slide, uh, uh, 2030 is, uh, again, another important uh, milestone for us in the future. Uh, we will, we, uh, we want to be, uh, we want all carbon emission uh, element to have eliminated from our activities and the electricity purchase and, and what we use. And looking at uh, the, the, the final uh, goal, we decided last year uh, to, uh, to fast forward by 10 years and we committed to get fully neutral uh, by 2040. Uh, we are really proud of this. It's a strong commitment, uh, but we are convinced we, we can get there. Uh, just summarizing what, uh, what, I, what, I, what I said, said earlier, uh, we, we really want to help others and become a part of a, of a, of a, of a chain, rather be individual in the process. Uh, so we are looking both to our, to our vendors and to our to our customers, and we will we might be speaking later about the recent European Green Digital Coalition uh, signed last week, uh, and we we happen to be the proud founding member of this of this initiative. Uh, that would be all from me. Happy to take any questions. Richard, thank you so much for this amazing presentation. It's uh, great to hear that also technological companies uh, committed to such an amazing uh, uh, commitment. Um, and also to make it shorter by 10 years from 2050. It's again what I mentioned in my uh, introduction uh, that usually the companies are well ahead the legislation. We see it in, uh, in for example, in my sectors, in, in energy storage, in the renewable energy business. Uh, the, the business sector is always uh, well ahead. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your presentation, uh, sticking with times uh, which we agreed on before with the organizers. Uh, I think we have like three minutes left, but we agreed uh, with the organizers that uh, we should continue. Uh, uh, I checked the MIA application, uh, which is again uh, uh, a reminder for you who are listening to our very fruitful discussion. Um, uh, that you can send the links uh, through a MIA presentation. I checked it 20 seconds ago and I haven't seen anything. So um, we should maybe, uh, gentlemen, uh, discuss between each other. Uh, since you, Richard, had a word as a, as a last one, uh, I would uh, dare to start with you, if you don't mind. You mentioned the Green Digital Coalition. Uh, I understand it's some kind of coalition on the, on the, Europe, on the European level. Um, and that Vodafone is one of the founding members. What are the main goals of this uh, coalition and who are there with you? Main uh, communication companies like uh, Vodafone? I hope I'm still unmute. Yes, that's the case. Uh, so, uh, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, it was, I think, last Friday when uh, we introduced, including our group CEO, uh, Nick Reed, that we uh, became the founding member of the of the of the uh, coalition of the Green Digital Coalition. This is a joint initiative of the European Commission and the major uh, digital telecommunication companies. And again, uh, we see our crucial role in the process of uh, becoming neutral in uh, fulfilling the the green targets, green green uh, green goals. Uh, uh, and the reason is that we, uh, in our in our uh, core business, is the digitalization. And uh, I think the examples of uh, of e-billing or a digital approach to invoicing is something which is a small step, but is a is a very important step. And uh, again, uh, we 
think that this we should be part of this initiative because we are enabling this uh, actually uh, and again uh, i started with our purpose and uh, i remember uh, our previous uh, uh previous ceo uh, mr vittoria colau uh, when we spoke uh, about other, other parts of the of the of the uh, purpose which is the inclusion and he said uh, I do not need a business case for inclusion. It's simply the right thing. And very similarly, with a company like Vodafone in, a, in, a, in 2021, I think we believe that uh, business success should not come, the, come at the cost of the environment. Uh, and this is something which uh, we are proud of. The customer are starting very heavily to ask us for, and not only customers, the messages from the from the from the investors uh, is uh, the messages are very clear. What are you doing, uh, not only in the uh, in the P in your PNL, uh, but also in your sustainability? And uh, the, the 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 amount of questions and the share of the questions we are receiving uh, shows us that we uh, began a very important journey, and it's the right journey. Great to hear that. And you also mentioned uh, the e-waste. Uh, what added value do your customers, for example, expect from that? I, I can see how uh, how hard it is for some citizens to to deal with the real wa waste. Uh, so I'm wondering uh, how this can work, and I believe it can. But uh, how do you want to achieve that? Yeah, and and I have to say, and frankly, this is a untapped territory. Uh, it We've been doing something in it, but there is still a lot of uh, things and work to be done. Uh, the problem with mobile phones and, or the e-waste we are looking for is it's very small. If you have an old TV set uh, or, uh, or a, a larger uh, gadget, you simply take it and recycle it. But with mobile phones, even, even, even tablets or, or notebooks, you simply put it into, into a shelf and it may lay there for years. And we want to change this. Uh, therefore, we are considering a new program, new, new agenda, which would motivate people to bring the e-waste back, uh, either uh, something which is totally unusable uh, for recycling or reusing, or something which may work for other customers uh, uh, for other use, uh, less demanding customers and so on. So again, uh, we, we, we aim to be uh, recycling 100% by 2025. We are not yet there, but we have, uh, we have strategies how to get there. Thank you for the explanation and also I'm glad for uh, something you said some two or three minutes ago. Um, and this is that, uh, the there is already equilibrium between uh, what makes environmental sense and what makes a business sense. Uh, it was it has not always been like that, and I'm glad that we just came to that stage. Uh, like you see, the, the the price of technology is coming down. People really being keen on buying it, on 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 you know taking such products, and we can see it on on Eon. Uh, Tomas, what can you say to that? Uh, do you agree with me that uh, most of the cases, I would say most of the steps you do, which you showed us uh, on behalf of E.ON, already makes uh, make an econo economic sense or or at least we have some kind of subsidies they, they can help overcoming it, except of, I would say, e-mobility yet? Um, look, we are corporations, so uh, our DNA must be profit, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, and growth, right? Um, if you're missing something, you are either either growing, and you, are, you are not profitable, or you are dying because you, your your business model has, has evaporated. So, unfortunately, whatever we do, we have to build up the business case behind it. Now, nonetheless, uh, we are absolutely open to make coalition and in, in investing together in something which needs break even quickly. Yeah? And I'm loudly thinking, really, like what what uh, uh, charging infrastructures is something which. All of us somehow feel I have a hybrid car. I can charge it only in in my garage. I can't charge it anywhere else conveniently. If you travel around the world, and here Czech Republic really sits on its legacy, like don't move. Uh, uh, something will happen. We won't. We won't need to do it. This is somehow Czech mentality in it. And and uh, sorry for being a bit harsh. 
because if you just go a couple of kilometers um, west, there is no discussion about it. As the, the, the business case is very similar, uh, <clears throat> but they are doing something, right? And so uh, I'm sure that we would be even even happy to to make coalitions with something. Uh, uh, obviously, I know that where where we need, for example, charging. Uh, and sorry to be just in details because this is something you mentioned, and I think this is something which everyone thinks. It's about. good. It's good. It's good. Uh, uh, where do you need immobility? You, you don't need it on the highways so much. You need to uh, penetrate it in the cities where the benefit is the highest one. Noise, uh, dust, uh, pollutions, etc. Smallest cars are so far the most efficient e-cars. Smallest cars are city cars, right? So that's why municipalities must be incentivized somehow by smart smart mayors and 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 investors to really convince the public that the, every payment must be open that we're building up these unpopular things so um and we will be more than happy to 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 play into it uh, i know that even our competitors here we are having the same struggle saying look there is a, there is an army of hybrid cars coming either as a second cell from germany or b basically by prime production because and they will be cheap because because um, automotive must sell them they have to fulfill the CO2 target. So they must sell them. They must prove that they sold them. Yeah, so they will be cheap very quickly. But we will be then looking at ourselves saying, thanks God, I have a hybrid that I don't have to use e uh, electric uh, motor in it. It's, it's crazy. And if I looked actually not a long time ago on, 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 a, on, a, on a balance of my hybrid car, it is still predominantly, let's say, fusile, fusile usage because I can't charge it. So... This is one of the really like cases where it shows for something. I don't know what, but uh, this is this is this is horrible. Otherwise, yeah, the, all the things we are doing, we hope they are contributing to it. Um, and I'm openly saying it. Various forums, we are still scratching the surface, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a there is a there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We really, as corporations, we we have to stick to that. So 2050, game over. We have to be neutral. So um, I'm not worried about it. We are at the beginning and we somehow looking at our, where we are. It's new for us, for everyone, I, 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 I dare to say. Um, so we will only and only accelerate our, our knowledge and smartness and transformations where every transformative uh, step will be sustainable. So I believe today we talk about paper bills. Um, five years down the road, this will be a funny joke, but it's a beginning. And I agree here with my with my previous speaker, with Richard, that this is the right step because it's a beginning. Yeah. And, and Very complex. Frankly, okay. Uh, I wouldn't be even worried about the politicians and about the administration because uh, uh, the path will very probably be businesses, uh, customers, uh, or society, and then the the public administration or politicians must react. It will be slow, it will take some years, but I'm convinced we'll get there. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, uh, I have to say digitalization, the real really impact for digitalization is not always on the agenda of the, of the, uh, of, uh, of the I would say rather public administration, uh, but we'll get there because there will be demand or the external factors and I still hope there will be a, a, a lot of positive from the time we are now experiencing. Uh, uh, the, the, the external factors will change it. I fully agree with that, but there is a, there is a lot of issues we have to solve and uh, these are not only politicians who can help us with that. Uh, but uh, maybe Jan, know, Jan, one one comment to it because I think sure, it's relevant. Of course. I think this, yeah. this is exact, exactly the platform we can use because uh, I mean, with all respect, politicians have their daily pains and they are dealing recently with something completely different. We have to be bold enough and courageous enough to educate them because if we would wait only to the to the to the bingo moment, now we need it with a with a technology cycle how to install it, for example, in this relatively demanding infrastructure for charging, then we are fifteen years um, from the from the target. Uh, whilst if we would raise the, the attention and pilots now, we may speed up the process. And it's really this awareness, and it's actually a political hard sell, by the way, in Czech, in Czech Republic. So 
no, no, no surprise. No one wants to 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 ponder on that in election year and election years every second year. So it's difficult. But uh, it it is our responsibility to as as a big corporation because by the way we are earning big money here on the Czech market and and and, and we are sending it somewhere else. So we should be at least this this bold to say, guys, this is the right step and we really like this is the way how you should handle that. I'm not mm. hiding. Look, there is a profit behind it for us, but also for society. So it's a win-win. Yeah. You share your wealth uh, on the Czech market, and I agree with that. You, you, you a little bit support of, uh, or uh, you a lot support uh, the trend energy and and uh, decarbonization. Um, uh, I would say, um, you know, the, the, the whole uh, situation, the whole progress. Uh, yes, that that's what I wanted to say. The whole progress you have to lead it. You, you and your competitors, as well as um, Vodafone and its competitors on, on the telecommunication markets. What I wanted to say is that. Um, the elections will be soon and there are politicians uh, they will hopefully um, take over uh, the power uh, they are there to help us now already I have to mention for example Mr. Marian Jureška who proposed some uh, amendments to uh, uh, you know clean energy who proposed uh, uh, for example the amendment to energy storage uh, who fights for energy communities for uh, you know better conditions for charging stations uh, and also uh, other parties uh, are there so let's hope it will change as well uh, at least it it will help you a little bit you uh, business corporations to uh, with with all your efforts they are already amazing and thank you for that um, uh, uh, let's come back to Michal Foritek uh, Michal you you mentioned that EU wants to ensure competitiveness in on of its own products uh, versus products produced in other countries outside of the EU uh, but these countries do not have such an ambitious targets for reduce, uh, for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, what tools do we have? Uh, some tax burdens? Uh, um, is it only CO2, uh, EU ETS, uh, CO2 trading, which I have been uh, personally very active in for like 10 years? Uh, what about, I mean, we heard also recently about uh, European Commission's idea to introduce the so-called border carbon tax what do you think about it? What, what tools do we have? Yes, it's a, it's a very good question. And uh, you, what you said, that's, that's uh, what the European Commission is thinking about. It's called the, the carbon border adjustment uh, mechanism. The, the Commission, of course, identified this risk of carbon leakage, uh, i.e. being the situation where the products imported uh, into the EU are produced uh, in a, in the jurisdictions with the less uh, ambition emissions uh, targets. So, of course, in order to ensure the competitiveness uh, uh, between the, these products and products produced uh, within the EU, EU states, we have to implement some mechanism that will uh, somehow protect our uh, products and this is called the carbon body adjustment mechanism uh, while the the exact details uh, how the the, uh, the european commission will deal with this aspect uh, are not known at this stage uh, i believe that uh, it will be some kind of tax imposed on the on the products imported uh, into the eu or uh, there is uh, there are consideration that these companies that uh, operates outside the EU will be obliged to buy uh, uh, emission reduction units uh, within the EU ATS uh, system. So uh, that's that's how uh, the European Commission intends to to respond uh, to this to this risk. Thank you for the explanation. I'm very much in favor of all those steps which European uh, Commission does and I uh, wish all of us uh, the best in all those efforts. I only remember uh, back in time when EU ETS was about to uh, be extended by, uh, you know, air industry, if you remember, uh, and uh, by the, you know, the flight carrier and uh, just China, uh, US, uh, Canada, uh, and basically all the, the rest of the whole world said, no, we are not going to take a part in that. So we will just stop sending our flights to Europe. So uh, the discussion, and I am part of it in, in, in Brussels also, the discussion is uh, 
if we are not going to lose the momentum, uh, you know, the speed of the growth with the rest of the world. And that what I mentioned now is, is just a comment. It's not something I wish. I definitely uh, don't want it. Uh, but that's just the risk we might face that uh, the rest of the world, that's what, um, that's what the um, you know, supporters of uh, fossil fuels and, and, you know, burning all those uh, you know, lignite and everything, they wish that uh, the European Union will just uh, bang into the wall with uh, those green efforts. Uh, do you think we will manage or the European Union will manage? Yeah, I mean... Also, um, the European Commission and EU is, is aware of this, uh, of these aspects of this initiative. And that's, uh, I think, why it is backed up by the massive investment programs. Yeah, there is a, there is an intended that I think around 1 trillion euro will be available for the investments in the public and, and private sectors. So uh, I think that's, that's how the EU uh, wants to address this and how to support it and how to respond to this situation when we will be trying to, to achieve uh, some, uh, some goals in this area while the rest of the, the world uh, will, be, uh, will be doing basically nothing. Yeah. As my last remark, uh, at least from my point of view uh, and from my position, I would like to propose to all of us let's uh let's do our best to support Czech Republic to uh consume all those amazing funds they are there they are available they are on the table they are already there they they do exist already it's a modernization fund it's a recovery plan it's a just transition fund we have a money for that but the the, the problem of the Czech Republic and the Czech especially this government uh is that we spend the money uh, on, uh, we, we just eat the money. We, we don't invest it uh, cl cleverly and we can see it with those efforts, if you follow it as well, with those efforts of a Green Deal. Our Prime Minister first refused that, as you know. Then he agreed, then he agreed conditionally by saying we can use the, the funds to keep the water in the land, but it's just one of the 20 other aspects, and we don't use it for investing into, for example, exactly green uh, renewable energy, uh, e-mobility, energy storage, uh, IT, digitization, etc. We just uh, just transition fund. Uh, they want to buy the computers uh, for the municipalities uh, with those money. That's not the kind of modern progressive investments, which, for example, even Baltic countries do. And they are much smaller and much poorer, I would say, than Czech Republic is. So that was just a... Uh, Kind of the a last wish uh, from me, uh, and I I don't know we we really uh, over time we are really over time. Marcela, how how do you see that? Uh, do you do you have any question or any comments or uh, do you want us to continue in this discussion or uh, we, we, can, we can have uh, time for like one more question or or you know, two more questions, like quickly to, 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 to go around. If I'm not mistaken, I had a look at the application and there was one question, but uh, I, I, I cannot switch uh, to, to this device at this moment because I'm talking. So maybe you can, you can have a look at that and we really can have like three, four, four, four minutes. Or if uh, each of the speakers would like to have, you know, the final uh, wish for the future, the final comment, uh, that's maybe also fine, but maybe you can have a look at the question and uh, after that we can have the final nice uh, bright future forecast. <laughs> Thank you, Marcela, for, for reminding me the, the MIA application. I checked it a few minutes ago and there was nothing, so uh, good to, uh, to click on F5 and to refresh it. Uh, we have uh, one question. It comes to Tomáš and Richard. Uh, thank you. Very interesting panel. A question for Tomáš and Richard. Have you heard of Chapter Zero, the Directors Climate Forum? And if so, are you considering getting involved in their activities in the CEE region? Or are you or your directors engaged in any other platforms focused on a strategic debate about the climate challenge and the risk uh, it possesses for the businesses? So uh, Tomáš, Richard, whoever wants to uh, answer first. I, I can take it. Um, uh, it. It rings the bell, the, the name, um, um, but I'm not part of it. But it actually brings me to the one interesting thing. thing. Um, you see that there are plenty of uh, 
or uh, let's put it sufficient number of various platforms now discussing the very same topic. But what we really need to make sure that we boil it down to some something tangible outputs, right? Because there is there are many platforms. So you see that there is a clear demand for, for some actions and you usually start debating it. Uh, but we should be really like structured and maybe better organized in a way. Let's make something, even small things together. The, the thing you mentioned, Jan, uh, I wouldn't blame any government for not being fit for, for this change. No one would, no one would be. Uh, uh, it's like you want to win in Bundesliga, you are coming, the, the team which, uh, which haven't seen anything close to that. So, and it's, it's not a criticism, it's a reality. Consuming and even structuring the demand for such, such unprecedented uh, uh, funds, uh, it really calls for cooperation. Maybe the first time ever efficient cooperation between the state and, 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 and the corporations. This, this platform I'm missing, for example, right? How to help each other to understand, obviously, if, if your knowledge has the limits, then you buy PCs for the municipalities, right? But this is like Stone Age. I, I agree with you. No. Similarly here, uh, I have to confirm, uh, uh, Tomáš, uh, there are pl plenty of platforms. What we are missing is probably the action, not internally, I think we are doing a lot, but joint action externally uh, to the uh, representation, to the authorities and, and so on. Unfortunately, uh, Jan, you mentioned uh, there are funds, there are really plenty of money coming to the, to the countries, to the member states. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not convinced, and it's not only me, uh, when I speak to businesses, to associations around me, uh, the, there, is a, there is a growing concern that the efficiency of use of this money will be limited and the money will not be used for real transformational change for the step change this country needs. Uh, you can, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not concerned that this money won't be spent. We can spend the money to, to, uh, to zero. Yeah, this would be fine. But what will be the, 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 the step change this money will deliver? And I'm not sure, and unfortunately we are seeing this, uh, that uh, replacing the, the, the standard public expenditure by this extra transformational money will bring much to this economy and society. Also, what really worries me, and I'm, uh, when I speak to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, to Svazpru uh, the message is very similar. There is lack of communication. In the, uh, there have been lack of communication in the past couple of months. So uh, uh, the, 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 the allocation and assignment of the money uh, is or has been decided so far from distance. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced the, the public administration has a lot of data, uh, has a lot of information, but maybe what will be helpful for them to have the view from the businesses and the societies uh, and even regions. I think there was lack of communication of, of this. So we know there should be 20% allocated for digital, 37 allocated to green projects. This will be fulfilled. Uh, definitely there will be projects which can be labeled green and there will be 37% of the whole, day, whole, whole, whole money. I'm not convinced that this, these will be far the best projects to deliver the value. That's basically, Ricardo, what I said, that uh, I, I'm not worried about the amount of funds, but about the effectiveness, how the how the state will deal with it. And that, that was exactly my comment. And that was probably um, kind of misunderstanding um, uh, with Tomáš, that I don't blame the state, that uh, it doesn't do the certain steps, but that basically offends, uh, the defends uh, the, the funds, the existing funds to be spent effectively. That, that was my comment. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, Michali, you wanted to something to add? Yeah, I think uh, Green Deal, it's a, it's a reality and uh, we should not leave our businesses uh, unaffected. We really need to respond to this, uh, to this uh, ambition plan. So we should not stick uh, to business as usual, but uh, we should try to uh, 
use this uh, opportunity as much as we can. And companies like E.ON, uh, Vodafone and others, they should be the leaders of this transition. And I, I hope you will, guys, uh, and your colleagues, you will uh, keep having energy for that. Uh, my fingers crossed to that. Okay, so uh, I think that's everything from me. I had some more questions, but uh, I think most of them were uh, covered already uh, during this discussion. Uh, thank you again, uh, panelists. It was an amazing discussion with you and also very enriching and enlightening for me. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Michal Foritek, Tomáš Bilhoubek, Richard Stonavský from Kinstellar, Ion and Vodafone, Marcela Černochová, uh, the Managing Director of uh, British Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much again for uh, uh, providing me with this honor to moderate this panel uh, and I'm returning the, uh, the, the floor to you. Thank you very much. Many thanks, uh, Jan. Uh, thank you for uh, the, the great uh, moderation or for facilitating uh, this, this, this panel. And uh, many, many thanks to, to the speakers. I mean, Michal, Tomáš, Richard, uh, thank you for the great contribution. I mean, very, very useful and uh, for me and I hope that for um, all the participants, the final message which you said at the end is uh, communication, cooperation, join the forces and uh, hopefully uh, together we can, we can uh, really move forward to the, 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 the green, green growth. I would also like to thank to, to all of the participants for, for being uh, with us and maybe a few more things to mention at, at the end. Uh, I would like to remind everybody that uh, the whole conference has been recorded. So you can uh, come back uh, to the recording in case uh, you have missed some of the speeches or you would like to listen to the panels which uh, you could not uh, attend or you can come back to, to, to your lecture, to your presentation and you can uh, see uh, what, what the other panelists were talking about. And uh, to close the panel, basically, I would like to emphasize that uh, this conference is, is just a start. It's a beginning of uh, BCC's uh, long-term activities in the area of sustainability. And uh, we plan a, no a number of uh, events which will focus on individual topics. And that uh, we hope that uh, some of the topics actually came out of the discussions which uh, we were uh, talking uh, through to today. So basically the chamber and now I am uh, following what you said, uh, joining the forces. We really want to create a platform for the community to, to exchange and share the experience and know-how. And basically everybody, including you and uh, the participants are welcome uh, to, to be involved and, uh, and participate. So please, if you are interested in and you want to get involved, do not hesitate to contact me directly or anybody from the chamber and uh, get, uh, get in touch. So once again, many, many thanks. Uh, keep healthy and safe. And uh, I really hope that one day, which is hopefully not far away, uh, we will be able to meet uh, face to face uh, soon. So uh, many thanks, uh, have a nice evening. And uh, as I said, keep safe. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much, um, thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye-bye.